Numbers chapter 26 After the plague, the Lord said to Moses and Eleazar, son of Aaron, the priest, Take a census of the whole Israelite community by families, all those twenty years old or more who were able to serve in the army of Israel. So on the plains of Moab by the Jordan opposite Jericho, Moses and Eleazar the priest spoke with them and said, Take a census of men twenty years old or more, as the Lord commanded Moses. These were the Israelites who came out of Egypt. The descendants of Reuben, the firstborn son of Israel, were, through Hanok, the Hanokite clan, through Palu, the Paluite clan, through Hezron, the Hezronite clan, through Carmi, the Carmite clan. These were the clans of Reuben. Those numbered were 43,730. The son of Palu was Elihab. The sons of Elihab were Nemuel, Dathan, and Abiram. The same Dathan and Abiram were the community officials who rebelled against Moses and Aaron and were among Korah's followers when they rebelled against the Lord. The earth opened its mouth and swallowed them along with Korah whose followers died when the fire devoured the two hundred and fifty men, and they served as a warning sign. The line of Korah, however, did not die out. The descendants of Simeon by their clan were, through Nemuel, the Nemuelite clan, through Jamin, the Jamanite clan, through Jachin, the Jachinite clan, through Zerah, the Zerahite clan, through Sheul, the Sheolite clan. These were the clans of Simeon. Those numbered were 22,200. The descendants of Gad by their clans were through Zephon, the Zephonite clan, through Haggai, the Haggite clan, through Shunai, the Shunite clan, through Osni, the Osnite clan, through Eri, the Erite clan, through Arodai, the Arodite clan, through Arelai, the Arelite clan. These were the clans of Gad. Those numbered were 40,500. Er and Onan were sons of Judah, but they died in Canaan. The descendants of Judah by their clans were, through Shelah, the Shelanite clan, through Perez, the Perezite clan, through Zerah, the Zerahite clan, the descendants of Perez were, through Hezron, the Hezronite clan, through Hamul, the Hamulite clan. These were the clans of Judah, those numbered were 76,500. The descendants of Issachar by their clans were, through Tola, the Tolaite clan, through Pua, the Puite clan, through Jeshab, the Jeshabite clan, through Shimron, the Shimronite clan. These were the clans of Issachar. Those numbered were 64,300. The descendants of Zebulun by their clans were through Sered, the Seredite clan, through Elon, the Elonite clan, through Jaliel, the Jalielite clan. These were the clans of Zebulun. Those numbered were 60,500. The descendants of Joseph by their clans through Manasseh and Ephraim were the descendants of Manasseh through Maker, the Makerite clan. Maker was the father of Gilead. Through Gilead, the Gileadite clan. These were the descendants of Gilead. Through Aiza, the Aizarite clan. Through Helek, the Helekite clan. Through Asriel, the Asrielite clan. Through Shechem, the Shechemite clan, through Shemida, the Shemadaite clan, through Hepha, the Hepharite clan. Zelophehad, son of Hepha, had no sons. He had only daughters, whose names were Mala, Noah, Hogla, Milka, and Terza. These were the clans of Manasseh. Those numbered were 52,700. These were the descendants of Ephraim by their clans, through Shuthala, the Shuthalahite clan, through Beka, the Bekerite clan, through Tehan, 
the Tehanite clan. These were the descendants of Shuthala, through Eron, the Eronite clan. These were the clans of Ephraim, those numbered were 32,500. These were the descendants of Joseph by their clans. The descendants of Benjamin by their clans were, through Bela, the Belaite clan, through Ashbel, the Ashbelite clan, through Ahiram, the Ahiramite clan, through Shufam, the Shufamite clan, through Hufam, the Hufamite clan. The descendants of Bela through Ard and Naaman were, through Ard, the Ardite clan, through Naaman, the Naamite clan. These were the clans of Benjamin. Those numbered were 45,600. These were the descendants of Dan by their clans, through Shuham, the Shuhamite clan. These were the clans of Dan. All of them were Shuhamite clans, and those numbered were 64,400. The descendants of Asher by their clans were, through Imna, the Imnite clan, through Ishvai, the Ishvite clan, through Bariah, the Bariahite clan, and through the descendants of Bariah, through Heba, the Heberite clan, through Malkiel, the Malkielite clan. Asher had a daughter named Sirah. These were the clans of Asher. Those numbered were 53,400. The descendants of Naphtali by their clans were through Jaziel, the Jazielite clan, through Gunai, the Gunite clan, through Jiza, the Jizarite clan, through Shilem, the Shilamite clan. These were the clans of Naphtali. Those numbered were 45,400. The total number of the men of Israel was 601,730. The Lord said to Moses, The land is to be allotted to them as an inheritance based on the number of names. To a larger group give a larger inheritance, and to a smaller group a smaller one. Each is to receive its inheritance according to the number of those listed. Be sure that the land is distributed by lot. What each group inherits will be according to the names for its ancestral tribe. Each inheritance is to be distributed by lot among the larger and smaller groups. These were the Levites who were counted by their clans, through Gershon the Gershonite clan, through Kohath the Kohathite clan, through Merari the Merarite clan. These also were Levite clans, the Libnite clan, the Hebronite clan, the Marlite clan, the Mushite clan, the Korahite clan. Kohath was the forefather of Amram. The name of Amram's wife was Jochebed, a descendant of Levi who was born to the Levites in Egypt. To Amram she bore Aaron, Moses, and their sister Miriam. Aaron was the father of Nadab and Abihu, Eleazar and Ithamar. But Nadab and Abihu died when they made an offering before the Lord with unauthorized fire. All the male Levites a month old or more numbered 23,000. They were not counted along with the other Israelites because they received no inheritance among them. These are the ones counted by Moses and Eleazar the priest when they counted the Israelites on the plains of Moab by the Jordan opposite Jericho. Not one of them was among those counted by Moses and Aaron the priest when they counted the Israelites in the desert of Sinai. For the Lord had told those Israelites they would surely die in the wilderness, and not one of them was left except Caleb, son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, son of Nun. Numbers chapter 27 The daughters of Zelophehad, son of Hepha, the son of Gilead, the son of Machiah, the son of Manasseh, belonged to the clans of Manasseh, son of Joseph. The names of the daughters were Mala, Noah, Hogla, Milka, and Terza. They came forward and stood before Moses, Eleazar the priest, the leaders, and the whole assembly at the entrance to the tent of meeting, and said, Our father died in the wilderness, 
He was not among Korah's followers who banded together against the Lord, but he died for his own sin and left no sons. Why should our father's name disappear from his clan? Because he had no son? Give us property among our father's relatives. So Moses brought their case before the Lord, and the Lord said to him, What Zelophehad's daughters are saying is right. You must certainly give them property as an inheritance among their father's relatives, and give their father's inheritance to them. Say to the Israelites, If a man dies and leaves no son, give his inheritance to his daughter. If he has no daughter, give his inheritance to his brothers. If he has no brothers, give his inheritance to his father's brothers. If his father had no brothers, give his inheritance to the nearest relative in his clan that he may possess it. This is to have the force of law for the Israelites, as the Lord commanded Moses. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go up this mountain in the Abarim range and see the land I have given the Israelites. After you have seen it, you too will be gathered to your people as your brother Aaron was. For when the community rebelled at the waters in the desert of Zin, both of you disobeyed my command to honor me as holy before their eyes. These were the waters of Meribah Kadesh in the desert of Zin. Moses said to the Lord, May the Lord, the God who gives breath to all living things, appoint someone over this community to go out and come in before them, one who will lead them out and bring them in, so that the Lord's people will not be like sheep without a shepherd. So the Lord said to Moses, Take Joshua, son of Nun, a man in whom is the spirit of leadership, and lay your hand on him. Make him stand before Eleazar the priest and the entire assembly and commission him in their presence. Give him some of your authority so that the whole Israelite community will obey him. He is to stand before Eleazar the priest who will obtain decisions for him by inquiring of the Urim before the Lord. At his command, he and the entire community of the Israelites will go out and at his command they will come in. Moses did as the Lord commanded him. He took Joshua and made him stand before Eleazar the priest and the whole assembly. Then he laid his hands on him and commissioned him, as the Lord instructed through Moses. Numbers chapter 28 The Lord said to Moses, Give this command to the Israelites, and say to them, Make sure that you present to me at the appointed time my food offerings as an aroma pleasing to me. Say to them, This is the food offering you are to present to the Lord. Two lambs a year old without defect as a regular burnt offering each day. Offer one lamb in the morning and the other at twilight, together with a grain offering of a tenth of an ephah of the finest flour, mixed with a quarter of a hin of oil from pressed olives. This is the regular burnt offering, instituted at Mount Sinai, as a pleasing aroma, a food offering presented to the Lord. The accompanying drink offering is to be a quarter of a hin of fermented drink with each lamb. Pour out the drink offering to the Lord at the sanctuary. Offer the second lamb at twilight, along with the same kind of grain offering and drink offering that you offer in the morning. This is a food offering, an aroma pleasing to the Lord. On the Sabbath day, make an offering of two lambs a year old without defect, together with its drink offering, and a grain offering of one-fifth of an ephah of the finest flour mixed with olive oil. This is the burnt offering for every Sabbath, in addition to the regular burnt offering and its drink offering. On the first of every month, present to the Lord a burnt offering of two young bulls, one ram, and seven male lambs a year old, all without defect. With each bull there is to be a grain offering, 
of three-tenths of an ephah of the finest flour mixed with oil. With the ram, a grain offering of one-fifth of an ephah of the finest flour mixed with oil. And with each lamb, a grain offering of a tenth of an ephah of the finest flour mixed with oil. This is for a burnt offering, a pleasing aroma, a food offering presented to the Lord. With each bull, there is to be a drink offering of half a hin of wine. With a ram, a third of a hin, and with each lamb, a quarter of a hin. This is the monthly burnt offering to be made at each new moon during the year. Besides the regular burnt offering with its drink offering, one male goat is to be presented to the Lord as a sin offering. On the fourteenth day of the first month, the Lord's Passover is to be held. On the fifteenth day of this month, there is to be a festival. For seven days eat bread made without yeast. On the first day hold a sacred assembly, and do not do any of your ordinary work. Present to the Lord a food offering consisting of a burnt offering of two young bulls, one ram, and seven male lambs a year old, all without defect. With each bull, offer a grain offering of three-tenths of an ephah of the finest flour mixed with oil. With the ram, one-fifth, and with each of the seven lambs, one-tenth. Include one male goat as a sin offering to make atonement for you. Offer these in addition to the regular morning burnt offerings. In this way, present the food offering every day for seven days as an aroma pleasing to the Lord. It is to be offered in addition to the regular burnt offering and its drink offering. On the seventh day, hold a sacred assembly and do not do any ordinary work. On the day of first fruits, when you present to the Lord an offering of new grain during the festival of weeks, hold a sacred assembly and do not do any of your ordinary work. Present a burnt offering of two young bulls, one ram, and seven male lambs a year old as an aroma pleasing to the Lord. With each bull there is to be a grain offering of three-tenths of an ephah of the finest flour mixed with oil. With the ram, one-fifth and with each of the seven lambs one-tenth. Include one male goat to make atonement for you. Offer these together with their drink offerings, in addition to the regular burnt offering and its grain offering. Be sure the animals are without defect. Psalm 57 have mercy on me, my God, have mercy on me, for in you I take refuge. I will take refuge in the shadow of your wings until the disaster has passed. I cry out to God Most High, to God who vindicates me. He sends from heaven and saves me, rebuking those who hotly pursue me. God sends forth his love and his faithfulness. I am in the midst of lions. I am forced to dwell among ravenous beasts, men whose teeth are spears and arrows, whose tongues are sharp swords. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. They spread a net for my feet. I was bowed down in distress. They dug a pit in my path, but they have fallen into it themselves. My heart, O God, is steadfast. My heart is steadfast. I will sing and make music. Awake, my soul. Awake, harp and lyre. I will awaken the dawn. I will praise you, Lord, among the nations. I will sing of you among the peoples. For great is your love, reaching to the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the skies. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. Proverbs chapter 26 Like snow in summer or rain in harvest, honor is not fitting for a fool. Like a fluttering sparrow or a darting swallow, 
an undeserved curse does not come to rest. A whip for the horse, a bridle for the donkey, and a rod for the backs of fools. Do not answer a fool according to his folly, or you yourself will be just like him. Answer a fool according to his folly, or he will be wise in his own eyes. Sending a message by the hands of a fool is like cutting off one's feet or drinking poison. Like the useless legs of one who is lame is a proverb in the mouth of a fool. Like tying a stone in a sling is the giving of honour to a fool. Like a thorn bush in a drunkard's hand is a proverb in the mouth of a fool. Like an archer who wounds at random is one who hires a fool or any passer-by. As a dog returns to its vomit, so fools repeat their folly. Do you see a person wise in their own eyes? There is more hope for a fool than for them. A sluggard says, There's a lion in the road, a fierce lion roaming the streets. As a door turns on its hinges, so a sluggard turns on his bed. A sluggard buries his hand in the dish. He is too lazy to bring it back to his mouth. A sluggard is wiser in his own eyes than seven people who answer discreetly. Like one who grabs a stray dog by the ears is someone who rushes into a quarrel not their own. Like a maniac shooting flaming arrows of death is one who deceives their neighbour and says, I was only joking. Without wood, a fire goes out. Without gossip, a quarrel dies down. As charcoal to embers and as wood to fire, so is a quarrelsome person for kindling strife. The words of a gossip are like choice morsels. They go down to the inmost parts. Like a coating of silver dross on earthenware are fervent lips with an evil heart. Enemies disguise themselves with their lips, but in their hearts they harbour deceit. Though their speech is charming, do not believe them, for seven abominations fill their hearts. Their malice may be concealed by deception, but their wickedness will be exposed in the assembly. Whoever digs a pit will fall into it. If someone rolls a stone, it will roll back on them. A lying tongue hates those it hurts, and a flattering mouth works ruin.